Hello and welcome to another episode of the 2911 Podcast, featuring myself, Brian McKithen, and my lovely wife, Allie McKithen. How are you doing today, Miss McKithen? Good. Why the face? Because you've been with me all day. Because I've been with you all day. Excuse the thunder in the background, y'all. It's <laughs> storming today. It never storms, but it's been storming for like three weeks straight. Back to the question, because I've been with you all day? Yeah, so you know how my day is going. It ain't bad, it ain't good, it's just a day. I said, but I asked a question, you said, because I've been with you all day. I said, why the face? And you said, if anyone can hear that, that is a storm that my wife was just speaking of. It is thundering here in West Texas. Saying because you've been with me all day, you should know. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I can't read it the mind. I'm good. Okay. So, uh, what is today's topic? Do you want to usher? Well, you, this was your topic, and you stated you wanted to go over the mysteries of iniquity. Yeah, um, I did want to go over that. I mean, we still can, uh... I just feel like that is a very, very vast uh, subject. I wasn't sure if we had the time to do it, but if you want to, we can get right on into it. Oh, I don't mind. It's Like I said, it was your topic, so you can choose that topic or whatever you want to talk about. Okay, let's go. Uh, Second Thessalonians. I believe it is. Second Thessalonians 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is at work already. Only only the one who now restrains will do so until he is out of the way. Um, my uh, title header for that is The Man of Lawlessness Will Be Revealed. So first, let me start for viewers who may not know. What is an iniquity? You want me to deal with that is? Yeah, I don't have my phone out. So. Oh. Iniquity is a uh, a wicked act or thing. So it's this like is the wondering injustice. of why there's ev- wicked acts. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, yes, but no. So when when he says the mystery of iniquity, I think of when when he says the mystery of iniquity, meaning the hidden the hidden things. The hidden sins, the hidden wrongdoings, the things that are being done repetitively that are wicked that we don't know about, but okay. they're going they're going to be revealed. Like, so are these just within mankind, or are these sins in our own hearts that we may not know that are being done over and over? Both. Okay. Because you know how we say have a saying: the blind lead, leading the blind. Yes. Remember, before Christ came on, before the New Testament, the nations had uh, start doing things amongst themselves as in tradition. Remember, Christ told the Sadducees and the Pharisees, you know what, you guys do a lot of things because of your forefathers, because of quote unquote tradition. God didn't say to do these things. You guys took it upon yourself. So yes, because of man and because of man's own heart and because of just the way, or like like in America, we always say, well, this is the way we do things. This is the way I was told to do it. And this is why I thought. And people just follow without any question, just blindly following. Just blindly following. But Paul is so, I mean, it's it's amazing. God is so good that this was written then and it's going to be revealed now and i'm not saying like now today but in in our time or whenever that man of lawlessness the man of of sin the man the wicked one whenever he will be revealed but it's not just him it's those who carry that spirit people who are walking in that spirit i can kind of say because you're not really on social media much if at all um I would definitely say we're at the beginning stages of those things being revealed because as we're starting to see these things enter into mainstream, I will say. So I believe a lot of this stuff has been going on behind, not believe, I know. A lot of this stuff has been going on behind the scenes. And one thing I keep hearing people say is like, this is nothing new. And I'm like, well, if it's nothing new, why are you barely becoming in an uproar about it? And this is the reason why. <clears throat> and call it whatever you may, call it whatever you might, but it's 
it's symbolic. When 2020 happened, you know, everyone ran had to run into the homes shelter in place, whatever the case may be. And yes, you know, that was a true disease. I'm not I'm not trying to call the pandemic anything. COVID. Yeah, COVID. I'm not trying to say it was a hoax or anything like that. I have people and within my family who've passed from it. But I'm saying it's it's funny that the the the, the nomenclature, not nomenclature, but the uh, the numerical value 2020 vision you think a 2020 vision right things will come things will now start to become more clear call it a pandemic then but it seems that the plan ever since 2020 from the realm of the heavenlies or just the realm with on this earth is that things are going to be now shown to you with no remorse and your vision on what we have for you and these days are just going to be out front we have nothing to hide anymore. We're going to do what we want. And either you're going to get down or you're going to lay down. So would you say we're not exactly quite there yet since... Let's no, say, we're there. So let's say... Because instance, the, the mysteries the, are now going to be known. The Bud Light Company. Mm-hmm. They backed out. Correct. So you said in Target, they're mm-hmm. starting to back out of what they're doing. So that's what I'm saying. Do you think we're not quite there yet? Because you're saying once we get there, these com- like no one's going to show any remorse. So there's no going to be trying to appease the majority correct but i said we're already there because they're being outright with the understanding of what the baphomet is and what they truly worship they're being outright and understand this this is the deity or the uh, group that we follow because we are non-binary or we are transgender or we're homosexual but i'm talking when i say mysteries of iniquity on a scriptural side we know the wicked we know the heathens but on a scriptural side i'm talking about those who worship and do christmas on december 25th okay those who do easter but you skip over the passover Mm -hmm. those who do all these other heathenous holidays but you forget the holidays that are spoken of in the scriptures and how you're supposed to uphold yourself according to the scriptures who you are supposed to be worshiping according to the scriptures when i say mysteries of iniquity i'm talking about why do you have your kids color easter eggs do the easter bunny thing and there's no talk about the easter bunny the the eggs and the bible so when we're speaking of the mysteries of iniquity stated in second thessalonians this is for the believers this this is for those who are already saved this has nothing to do with the lost i wouldn't say it doesn't have nothing to do with the lost because he's talking to those in, in, in thessalonica right these people needed to know about the things but at the same time are, do they know the full understanding of who has already came and yet still yet again the empires that which were being that's which they were governed over did they have full understanding of the way they were doing business according to the way they ought to be doing business remember the Jews were under the Roman Empire a lot of the a lot of the the people within the synagogue, the not only synagogue, but a lot of the Jewish leaders had been already corrupted by the system. Mm-hmm. Now, then we fast forward, and I, I I'm not saying this is what Paul was speaking to, but it it, it just it it makes so much clear sense on my behalf. Then the Roman Catholic Church adopts Christianity or the belief of Christianity or what these people were following. They say, hey. You know, let's just have your days aligned with these days and you guys can still celebrate whatever it is that you claim you celebrate. But just celebrate it on these days when Constantine and the Roman Empire took over Christianity and then you got Catholicism. But that's why true believers or those who truly understand the scriptures, they fight Catholicism. OK, you say you follow the Bible. But you guys do this, this, that, and the third. You praise a father God, a mother God, and a son. The scriptures don't tell you to do that. You you burn this candle, that candle, and you fasten your hearts, and this you prayer, and you do prayer. Lent. Like yes, you're supposed to fast in in some way, form, or fashion. 
but you do these things called Lent. You do these things. I mean, you do it in vain. A lot of the a lot of the things you do are are truly to vain. You do it because this is what your your forefathers or your people have told you to do, but you truly don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's funny that um, because as you're saying this, as you know, believers, we just blindly fall in line, and we're not gonna. Brian and I are not gonna sit here and act like we've never participated in these things or we've never done these things. Um, but it reminds me of, and it's funny because the scripture that popped into my head is actually in first Thessalonians. And I love how the Bible kind of sets itself up because you have in first Thessalonians five verses 19 through 22, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. So if we're supposed to be testing what is good, that means that we should not, for one, be blindly following anything. We should question everything. And two, to abstain from every form of evil. So once we start to learn and know the root of some of these these holidays that are being celebrated. And first off, let's just talk about the, the word holiday. It's supposed to mean holy day. And so then you just have a lot of words that used to have value just no longer have value. They're just thrown around. Holiday. So you have 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Memorial Day is a holiday, which is where we're at right now. Veterans Day is a holiday. And there's no true meaning anymore in maybe just in America of what a holiday is, what a holy day is, because we've just slapped that name on everything. Yes. Uh, and that that's that's good. That you, I'm not saying you can commemorate and remember things. I'm not saying that. But I'm talking about to the van to the vanity in which man moves or desires himself to fall into Uh, my study bible on this topic says this although it is unclear to whom or what paul refers in this verse he nevertheless accomplishes his purpose to convince the thessalonian believers that the day the lord is yet to come because they have not witnessed the event paul described so that answers what you asked me earlier well who what's his audience What, what is he talking about He's, he already, the spirit, the spirit, through the spirit, these men were able to write this book. So like it says in Timothy, you know, tests, the, 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 the books, the scriptures were written for reproof or correction, all of these things. But yes, men did write them, but through the spirit of God, they were guided to, you know, every last one of them to be in harmony with one another from I mean, millennia in between and decades within between within the New Testament and things of that nature. So I, I, I ramble all of that to say this. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm willing to recorrect myself and follow the righteous path and what God has called me to walk. But if I'm not wrong, starting with the, the biggest one, because a lot of my family asked me and then it messed up, I would say, a couple of relationships before you and things that I was convicted of when I first came to Christ. When I first got baptized, I said, I'm, I'm going to be serious about this. I'm not only going to walk, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to walk blindly anymore, but also I'm going to do what the things, the book uh, con- convicts me of. Christmas was one. Now, you already know, I, I do like gifts. I love giving gifts. I like to go all out. Sometimes I can be overly expensive when I do things, but it's all from a place of love, cheerfulness, and want. I I believe I'm a cheerful giver in everything that I do. If I put myself in that realm, I'm going to be cheerful about it, right? So I say all that to say this. I've had coworkers ask me, well, you don't celebrate Christmas. Why? I said, and this is not to brag. This is no bragging, no nothing, not nothing like that. I just know whom in which I serve. If I want to bring quote unquote Christmas in July, I can do that. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't take me to the end of the year to bless my children other than on their birthdays. 
if I want to come home and bring my wife a diamond necklace because it's Tuesday, I shouldn't have to wait for her birthday, Valentine's Day, or some significant day. She works hard every day. I appreciate her and everything she does. Why must I wait and hold these things for a quote unquote day of giving? And so with you saying that, a lot of people would then rebuttal and say, oh, well, it's for the birth of Christ. Because Christ was given gifts. Where do you see anyone else on that quote unquote day? If it was that day, if it was December 25th, aren't you supposed to be giving unto Christ then? Isn't it his day? That's like me saying, Allie, it's your birthday, but I'm going to go give your cousin or I'm going to go give the neighbor gifts on your day. Mm-hmm. Why are we exchanging gifts amongst one another? It, the scripture don't say that they exchange gifts amongst one another on that day. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, if if we are supposed to celebrate this day, why do we celebrate it the way that we celebrate it? So in the sense, oh, it's a good question. Because I'm just like, how would how would one righteously celebrate that day? And there is no righteous way there isn't. to celebrate but that now, day unless you can... Just dedicate that day solely to fasting, prayer, and seeking the Lord. But and now, but then, if you do the research on "quote unquote" Christmas, yeah, you understand that Christmas came from Yule, Saturnalia. Saturnalia, Saturnalia yeah. And now, people will say like, "There's an there's an old." I'm not saying it's propaganda, but it's like an old flyer or like an old poster board or something of that nature, where it says uh, Saturnalia is the reason for the season. Now adopt Christianities. Jesus if, if is the reason. Jesus is the reason for the season. Mm-hmm. In order to to make these people feel good about their own beliefs and their religion, quote unquote, we're gonna adopt them in, make them feel loved, get the warm and fuzzies, and tell them, hey, just just do it on this day because we celebrate Osiris on this day. We celebrate our one true God or our Son of God on this day. And it, it, just for the sake of you living, it will all work out if you guys just celebrate on this day. Right. And the reason why this is so important is because everything is spiritual. Correct. Everything can cause a spiritual, well, spiritual warfare is real for one. And with everything being so spiritual, the same way as Christians, we can bounce off of one another and grow one another's spirit within Christ when we give in to celebrating these holidays that are pagan holidays, they are feeding off of the energy that we give them. Witchcraft is very, very real. Now, now, let me take what you just said and incorporate what I said and show it to you in the Bible. Now, the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a prophet and he spoke through from God. He spoke to Jeremiah to tell the people because they were in a place where they needed to hear God and understand what was about to go on. Jeremiah has a lot of prophecy in mm-hmm. it. So this is what God said to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 10. Now, if I'm wrong, and you're whoever feels convicted by what I say, you take it up with God. Don't take it up with Brian, because Brian's only reading what the scripture thus says. If I'm wrong, yet again, if I'm wrong, prove me wrong. And I'm and I'm willing to with scripture. I'm willing to understand where it's coming from but why what what i'm about to read why does it line up with one of the major topics we're about to talk about okay jeremiah 10 starting at verse 2 thus says the lord learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them for the customs of the people are vain for one cutteth a tree Out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it move not. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they can do no evil. Either also is it in them to do good, for as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Sounds like a Christmas tree to me. And if not a Christmas tree, what other tree 
he, he says it's upright like a palm tree. They fasten it with gold and silver and they hammer it like a mistletoe. They, ham, they, hammer, they hammer it down. They hammer these things so that they may not move, right? Mm-hmm. And they fasten them to it. If that is not a Christmas, I'm not, I'm not saying it was a Christmas tree, an evergreen, it probably is, it probably was an evergreen tree. But God says, do not do what these people are doing. Mm-hmm. Because and, and, and the thing that stood out to me is that when it says they cannot do no evil, it's not saying that what they're doing is not evil. It's saying, don't be afraid of them because they can do no evil towards you. But then it says they don't know good. They do not know any good. So why would you want to do something after a people that don't know anything good? This speaks to like, and man, I used to say this. I think I might have said this to my dad, but I know he said it to a lot to myself. I would, I wanted to be a lot like Jonah. Like, Lord, don't send me anywhere <laughs> where people don't understand they left from their right hand. That's hard. It's a hard place but, to be. But look then at, you have children. But look at these people. <laughs> it's kind of like what God's saying amongst his people to these people. Like, hey, they... They do evil. They don't know it, but they're doing, you know, they're doing what they know. Nineveh didn't know they left from their right, but God was sending them someone to let them know, like, hey, that's not the way of life. That's not the way to go. Mm -hmm. There's no light. There's no life in what you're doing. You know, you're, Mm -hmm. you're, you're tearing your people down from generation to generation to generation. Wonder why God would tell every time Israel was being moved, they were like nomads, right? They wandered a lot. Anytime they, they went into the new promise on the, the, the land that was promised God to, to them, said, he said, be not, not like the heathens. Mm-hmm. Do not do these things. Do not do. And he was letting them know what they was already doing. Do not partake in this. Do not partake in that. Stop doing this. If you're already doing that, stop doing that. You know what I mean? There's a time for this. Now we're cutting this, this off. You, there's no more need for X, Y, and Z. So just fastening into what I'm, what I already said, what holiday is that? It sounds like Christmas to me. I don't know mm-hmm. any other holiday where, or I don't know any other culture. Let, let's say that then. I don't know any, and I know where, where Christmas comes from. It, like I said, it comes from the Norwegians. It, it, it's Yule. They, they call it Yule. In the episode of Bernie Mac, it, I mean, it pops up at the bottom. It says a Yule log. Like, and this, it was one of the Bernie Mac Christmas episodes. Mm-hmm. The entertainment industry, these people in America, they, they put know it in your, what they th- do. They put it in your face, but because it's called the entertainment in- industry, we think, oh, it's just entertainment. But it's also called a television, so I'm telling you a vision. Or not just telling you a vision, I'm selling you this vision. Mm. And whether you know it or not, you're going to get entranced into my spell or... You're television gonna, program. Yeah, I'm pro, they were called you. programmings uh, from from the from its inception. Yeah, that's These what it's are called. Television program. It's like, it's like oh, do you have the the TV program? TV guide. What what channel is this? You know, what time is this show coming on? The, everything that the that the wicked want to do, they've put it in our face all this time. And that's why I agree with my husband when I say, by the way, guys, I usually just ask him questions. <laughs> To get the ball rolling. We talk about this stuff all the time. We don't talk about anything that I don't know. So this is why I agree with Brian is because as we were talking, I asked him, I said, so do you think we're there yet because of what's being revealed? And I agree with him because like I just said, this stuff has been right in front of us the entire time. But now the veil has been removed from our eyes and we're starting to recognize it. We're starting to see it. Um, I would say the masses are starting to recognize it and the masses are starting to see it because a lot of those who have been diligent in reading the word, a lot of those who have been diligent in trying to seek out the word of God, but also understand, okay, what do I need to stay away from? Which means you do have to understand what is wicked too, because you can't fall into that. And there's a scripture and I can't say it. I can't remember it, but it's Paul. And he's saying to know the laws, to know sin. Which means you have to understand the law and no sin to stray to stray away from it. Remember, Jesus didn't come to do away, but to fulfill the law. So this goes into, like me, I'm convicted not to eat pork. Now, a lot of my family, well, boy, you was eating pork, child. Yeah, I'm not saying, it's like this. Before you were baptized or before you come into Christ, right? You know, you not before but when you come to god when you get baptized when you are 
aware of the sinful nature you had you repent and you turn away from it so once i understood the law certain laws and certain things i and, and one one part of the scripture that always just stood out to me was because a lot of people will say the vision that was given to uh peter by god about the unclean and the clean oh see that there that there points you that you can eat uh of every animal right okay if that be the case right why was it when Jesus met the guy, the man with lesion, those unclean spirits asked to go into the pig. Now, anyone can say, well, it was just a coincidence that the pigs are right there. And that could be a coincidence. But why why not just tell them no? Cast them anywhere. Cast them this way, that way, the third. But even even the unclean spirits wanted to go into this unclean animal. And then from there... The pigs jump off the cliff. So, yet again, just to sum it up, there's, there's, so there's ways. So, so, so there's, what's your hold trying? on, Allie, hold on. There's ways in which the chosen were, were there were, there's ways in which the nation of Israel, even after captivity, even after they split, these people knew the way of life. But then after being in bondage, after being intermingled with other nations after being sold into captivity after all this stuff the scriptures still stand true what i'm saying the mysteries of iniquity is because remember they were when when the gospel was being spread paul was paul and peter they were well especially uh paul because he was the one going out to these gentile nations he was saying you know you guys have you know the bloodline in you guys i'm he was speaking to them for a reason they were some of these nations, some of these places that he was going, they were of the lost tribes. Remember, Jesus said who he came for were the lost sheep, the lost 10 tribes, the northern kingdom. So isn't it ironic that where they were disseminated, the apostles would go speak to were the same places that the 10 tribes had been scattered amongst the, ab- abroad. So when... The Holy Spirit came through these apostles and through these messengers. The conviction would happen right then and there, like the day of Pentecost. It wasn't that the men were drunk. Now, to the naked eye and to those who only see with, you know, within this dimension, they were they were saying, oh, these men were drunk. These men are, you know, no, these men were talking in the other man's native tongue. To speak in tongues means to speak in a language. Not that they were gibbering. It sounded like gibberish to those who didn't know the language. Like if I don't know how to speak Arabic, it sounds like gibberish to me. But if I were to go and start speaking Arabic to an Arabic man, he would look at like, man, how do you know that? How, how are you led? Like Paul said, I am whatever to whomever for the sake of the gospel. He learned how, and I believe through the spirit, he learned how to speak all these other languages. He was, he was, I'm not going to say he was a thug, but to the thug guy, he could talk the man off the street to becoming a, a follower of Christ. They became fishers of men. So I'm saying all this to say the lost knew of a custom, but because just like in uh, Moses' day, the nation of Israel, it was just so much easier to do what our captors were telling us to do, it's the same way today here in America. It's so much easier to follow than it is to do what, what says the Lord. In the, in the gospel, it says, narrow is the way. It doesn't say it's broad. It doesn't say, it says narrow. It's not easy. So w- once you come under these convictions, and if you're truly seeking out the things of God, seeking out the things of Christ. It's hard. I mean, even for like, we just talked about the homosexuals, the, the, the transgender community. It's hard for a man. Christ says this, and this is why John is my favorite book. Jesus said, for man loveth his own works rather than the light. It's, it's so easy amongst ourselves to say, you know what? I'm gay. I'm always going to be gay. So it's easy for me to just continue to be gay than it is to follow what God says for me. If if me being gay is, is not all right with God, then damn it, I'm just going to be gay because this is who I am. Either God going to meet me here or, he, or I guess we not meeting each other. People would rather play 
the role of the Most High or tell the Most High to come down to their level rather than walking in His way, walking in the, under thing, His under His law and commandments. The crazy thing is, is that God does already meet you where you're at, but He's not gonna allow you to stay there. Correct. That is that is truly correct because that is that is one of the that is one of the most said things. That's not even in Scripture. That that is not even in Scripture. Oh, Jesus says, come as you are. The Bible says, come as you are. But I'll, 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 I'm going I'm to leave everyone else alone. I'm going to make this person. That is true. God does say, come as you are. But damn it, he wasn't telling Brian to, to stay, uh, stay remaining in drug and paraphernalia. He wasn't telling Brian, hey, keep being a, a, a robber, a thief, and, and, and this kind of man. I'll make it personal. I'll put my business <laughs> on the street. I'm not that no more. Yeah. But just just so just so nobody feels like you're personally it's, I'm, a, I'm on a personal attack or on a personal agenda the scriptures are on its own agenda all of what's been said and written will come to pass it's all going to come to pass but i'll focus on myself mm-hmm. since nobody want you know i'll take the slugs because i'm not that old man's in the ground yeah he might want to stick his arm up through the ground and try to come out get a breath of air Oh, that's so funny because Brian and I were talking yesterday and he was like, but I, can't, oh. I can't allow it. And he told me to be careful about something because what if somebody says something about me? And I told him and I said, I really don't care what anybody has to say about me. Even if it was yesterday, that past was the past. I'm a whole new person today. And I'm a whole. And I, I say, be careful. The, be careful of the stones you cast because somebody somebody else might want to dig up something. And cast those stones back at Right. You. And I don't think I've I've never hidden my past, not from my husband, not from TikTok, not from YouTube. Everybody knows my past. I was a very promiscuous woman. I tried to find gratification in sex, drugs, and by drugs I mean weed. Before y'all start calling me a crackhead. <laughs> um alcohol. <laughs> Oh, you know, and you know, that that is who I was. I, I, too, used to be a thief. I used to shoplift. I used to be a what they call a booster. And I look back at those times and I'm like, man, everything I did, all the money I made, everything like none of it. I have none of that today. Like all of those stones I was grabbing never built up to anything. But why? Because I was living a life of iniquity. I'm going to give you a prime example of someone right now. Uh, for any women who might have a dude or husbands, uh, there's an NBA player, John Morant right now, who just seems like he cannot put the gun down mm-hmm. in, I, in IG videos. Why? I don't know. This man has, I want to say over $200 million in asset or not assets, in a contract with an NBA team. And all they ask is, man, hey, whatever you do in your private life, stop making it so, stop making it so public. Like, bro, why must you publicize, uh, why must publicize. you publicize what you're doing in your personal private life, time? yeah. Like, like, and a lot of people are like, and a lot, and what shocks me is a lot of people I didn't think would be on my side on this are actually on my side on mm-hmm. this. They're like, bro. You got out the hood to, you know, better yourself, your family, your community. You don't. Yeah, you you could take the hood with you, quote unquote, but you're not supposed to be fumbling the bag like that, bro. You you put your your dude on and make him your security guard. You put your mom in a nice in a nice community. You take your brothers, your sisters, your your, your own kids. You put them in a in the charter schools or whatever. Right. You, you don't. You you, you don't. develop jobs for us so that we can better ourselves. But we don't need you in. You don't in the bring videos. the hood to stay in the hood. Right. No. Nah, and not like only that, side, but, you but hustling backwards, say, bro. You but, about to fumble all this, all these millions, all the progress. For what? Because what? you want to wave a gun. Because in you want to look like. Because you want to look like Chief j- just Keith to say like this, what? but to look like the stereotype of what America already says black men look like. Yeah, and that is one. So thing you want to play this say, character right. so that you can make us all be back under the thumb or under under the whimsicality of what these people say. Right. This is why black celebrities, black. Quote unquote, for me, I'm gonna speak for me. Quote unquote, if you look like my skin color and you're a celebrity, if you're of 
big name. This is why I tell my kids and I tell anyone else, I can't follow that person. He is a, what do you call it? Uh, paid opposition. What he pushed and what he might be peddling, he might not believe, Martin Luther King, he might not believe in it, but he gonna push a pedal that because that's where he making his money at. Right, and I would honestly say that to get back to the basketball player, I already forgot his name, not a basketball fan. Um, I would say that's the number one problem with the so-called black man today. And I say so-called because black is not a race. But um, is that we get in this in these positions as a culture, as a community, and it's hard for us to let go of thinking, well, dang, I got to bring everybody with me that came up with me. Not everybody's and, meant to go with you. And this also goes back into scripture. It goes back into scripture in John 15. Hey, I'm going to start cutting off branches, which even Christ tells us not everyone is meant to go with you. Not everyone is meant to grow with you. Look, look at, uh, I won't go all the way into a lot because some people probably never read that and don't understand that. But I'll go from the beginning with Lot. Lot and Abraham had a split. Mm-hmm. Man, you got too much, I got too much. You need to go over there, and I'm going to go this way. And that was all out of love. But even when, Lot, when, when Lot's life was on the line, Abraham came like, Lord, you know, what about 50, 40, 30? You know, how many will you save? And they were given instructions when mm-hmm. they left. I'm going to stop it right there. But they were given instruction when they left. Lot lost his wife because she decides to be disobedient. And that's what a lot of people are going to. I'll give you a prime. I'll give you a prime scripture that's going to resonate with a lot of folks when this time comes for Christ. Jesus said, get away from me for, for I don't know you. Yeah, you spoke, you say, you know, they're going to say, we prophesied, we prayed, we healed, we did all these things in your name, Lord. A lot of people are going to wake up and realize when they come to find out, hey, we celebrated and we did this and that, Lord, nah, mm -mm, you you ain't do that in my name. Where where, where did I tell you to do this at? Who told you I said to do this? I mean, my, my devil said, who told you I said that? (laughs) <laughs> are you putting words in my mouth and, and if you, I mean if someone told you you need to tell me where where are you getting this information from correct because either you're being misinformed or someone's feeding you disinformation that they're, they're, they are feeding you lies mm-hmm. for you to be truly misinformed to lead on you purposely that yeah they're disinforming you they're purposefully feeding you lies to lead you astray and They'd probably, rather you be misinformed. And that probably leads from a sense of envy, jealousy. Nobody like, and, and it's hard because it's like sometimes those who you want to bring with you are the main ones plotting against you. Definitely. Like we watch a show called Power. <laughs> totally I really not don't a godly give, show. Huh? It's a totally not a godly show. No, it's not. It's not. Entertainment. But, but, Entertainment. but, it, but it does show you something within life. Yeah, if you watch it with the... I won't... And most people probably haven't seen it yet, but we get to... It gets to a point where you start cheering for this little bad butt uh, Tariq. Yeah. And then Tariq getting set up left, right, and the third. And it's like, man, why why do they keep doing him like that? And, and I will say, ooh, yeah, that is because Tariq did do a lot to bring a lot of them up and to pull a lot of them out of sticky situations. Right. But, but he... he he did one. He did one thing to, to a certain character on that show, you know. Decided to cut that off, and then the true the true colors re- were revealed by the end of that episode. Like, yeah, you know, I felt this way about it from the start. So this is where we. You wanted to be on that side of the line. I'm on this side of the line. Yeah. How do we end up on power? I'm supposed to be talking about the mysteries of a Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> I right, power it. Power itself, power is a power, mystery. Yeah, it is. A, I'm gonna say it's a mystery of iniquity. But power itself. I mean, look at you know. There's a good book out there uh, called The Thirteenth Tribe, and it illustrates how a group of people, and this is a factual book, how right now in our day and time, there's a group of people who call themselves the chosen people of God. They hijacked everything out of the scriptures. 
to be called the holy ones. Mm. And now if you read Revelation, Revelation talks specifically to this group of people. You call yourself Jews, Mm -hmm. but you're not the Jews. You call yourself this. Revelation, I want to say it's in chapter two. I would say that 13th tribe has done a far better job than Satan himself in marrying anything that God did. Yes. Yeah. It tells you who these people are and a little bit of a, a And I would only say that because you, you, the world You said today... something that we both came to the knowledge of at probably around the same time, or if not a little bit in between, that black is not a color. A color your color can't be and your most, race. And most people are not even... White, because you... If you look at you, you look white. Until you start looking at your features, mm-hmm. okay, she's probably Hispanic. Oh, wait, her father's black. Oh, wow, I would have never thought. So, you leave it again personal. If I brought Brian in here right now, people look at Brian, oh, a little white boy. But mm-hmm. I'm his father. And anyone on, on, on Ali's IG can see me right now. I'm about, the, I'm about the blackest thing, man. I, I'm so black, sometimes my shadow don't even got to follow me because I'm so black. That's how black sometimes I can be. You say that and the screen gets brighter. You just brown. <laughs> just brown. <laughs> yeah, my, my oldest, she would say, Daddy, you're not black, you're brown. But no, honestly, pe- the, pe- the, 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 the tribes, Jacob's children, they came in all sorts of colors, shades, whatever you want to call it. Were they black? Okay, quote unquote. But how is it that a black man can make different shades? If I brought Bryson, like... I was joking with a couple people from the job, and they're like, oh, wh- which son is the one that you say is good at soccer? I said, oh, Bryson, the one that looked Puerto Rican. And they go, oh, they all look Puerto Rican, bro. And I think, oh, well, if you if you do a deep dive on Puerto Ricans and where they come from, mm-hmm. okay. Like, it, 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 can get, it can get real deep. I mean, the rabbit hole goes real deep. But you can really sum it up with a couple of words. People come from tribes the male the the progenitor and this is why it's a whole shot on masculinity i'm not saying women don't get shot at but this is why they're trying to take down them the monarchs and everything like that patriarch the patriot yeah i said monarch the patriarchs it's because a man was able to write history through his seed and really right now i think that they've torn the patriarch down so much that now they are trying to tear down the monarch because at this point women can't even call themselves women anymore right oh oh you're but why a, you're is that they want you birthing. to they They're want you to they and, want the transgender to be god they want the baphomet to be the highest and was, deity and that you say, worship the reason, which is a transgender I was deity say the reason why well in my opinion to say it because a lot of people are gonna say oh that sounds hateful but to say it to where it don't sound so hateful is that they're doing it to remove all order. Correct. Why? Because the one true God, Yahweh, is a God of order. But the main order is what? God said, the head of every man is Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and any man in order would, would follow under Christ. That man's headship then would be in the wife, then the wife, the kids. So, it goes, Christ, the man, the woman and kids. But now if you really look at they want to flip it upside yeah, down. It's completely you said upside a, down. we were talking earlier today and you said one thing. I, I mean, I knew it, but it never it didn't resonate with me like on a day-to-day walk. You said, Well, they're not targeting you, I, and and everyone in our age group or everyone in our generation. The generation being targeted is Ethan's generation. Let's tell these kids they can make their own decision. Why? We give the kids power for the future of their future. Ethan's kids. Mm-hmm. You do, you corrupt the children now so that the children behind them and their generation then their is now is living in corruption. Their work is done for yeah, them. It, it, it's not for it's not for the ones who are living right now. This uh, the new this whole new world order thing. It's already been in play. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you think that they're just now okay. Now we're just gonna start kicking things off. No, things have been snowballing and rolling. To get to this point, certain Correct. things had to happen for things to finally be re- be revealed. But the New World Order wasn't just something that was going to just happen overnight. There's been presidents who've stated New World Order before we were born. Mm-hmm. You know, this is for the New World. Like, th- and I mean, these are these are presidential talks that they're, they're given to the masses. 
So, yet again, the mysteries of iniquity have been at work since Paul wrote it. Maybe even before Paul wrote it. These, these have been things where man has been led to believe one way, but, you know, they went a whole other way. I remember uh, a, a passage in the scriptures where the uh, Pharisees asked Christ, well, why don't your, why don't your uh, disciples wash their hands? Oh, and he tells them, he says, because it's not what goes into your body that, that defiles, defiles you, but what comes out. And Matt, they don't understand the matter of the heart. heart. They don't understand that you talking about this man. Yeah, yeah, is it a good practice? Was it a good Can't practice? Was it a good practice for man to wash his hands? Yeah. That's, I mean, cleanliness. Cleanliness, yeah. Okay, yes. But you're talking about these folks and, and washing their hands. They even asked the Mashiach about um, about fasting, and he says it's gonna be there's gonna come a time when my people fast. That time ain't now, but there, there is gonna come a time when they fast. And then he goes into talking about um, something happens after that situation, and they're like, "Lord, how did you do that? Oh, these can only come out by prayer and fasting." Yes, yes, yes. So the scriptures work hand in hand from the old to the new. Like a lot of people think that you can just do with the new. The New Testament is good, but how can you truly understand God if you don't read the old? How, I'll give you even. I'll give you something better. I believe my my father's done this to me. My grandmother's done this to me. Maybe some of my aunts, but me, Brian. How could I understand who I am if I don't know my my past? How could mm-hmm. you say you understand where you're going or what's coming? If you don't see what was laid down before you. And the crazy thing is that you have to know the past. Excuse me, because if you don't, you're bound to repeat it. Correct. You're bound to keep falling into the same traps. You're bound to just keep doing failure. And that was something that was brought to me, to my attention today. Um, You know, you know, I've always told you since the beginning, like God tells me things in three. And it's because I'm hard headed. I've never denied being hard headed. I would just say I'm not stubborn. Like me. Yeah, I'm hard headed, but I'm not stubborn. And so at church, we talked about marriage. We were in Ephesians. I was watching a vlog and it's a Christian YouTuber YouTuber I watched. Her name is Maya Graves. And she showed a bit of her church sermon from last Sunday in her vlog. Guess what they were talking about? Marriage. Same exact scriptures being read. So then I'm like, okay, so I stopped watching her vlog. I'm like, I need to get more into the word because my husband said something that bothered me. It bothered me so bad. So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to just read the word because he can't be right. Like he's not right. These are, the, every sermon I've heard about marriage today is about him. And he needs to fix himself. Like <laughs> that is where my mind was at. So I go into my own time with reading Ephesians five again. And I'm like, okay, like, This is for me. This is for me. And the Lord put it on my heart. Like there is a lot that you haven't let go of. There are ways that you were not aware of then that you're not aware of now that my husband just pulled out of me without realizing he pulled it out of me. And I was mad at my husband. And I was like, well, why am I so mad? Why am I so offended? That's because it was a heart issue with me. It was a heart issue with me. And so, you know, we go talking about the mysteries of iniquity. And that's why I asked my husband, like, well, do you think it's just in the world? Do you think it's with ourselves? And like my husband said, I believe it's both. Because I'm having iniquities within my own heart being brought to my attention daily. And it also goes into knowing my past. I didn't know that about my past. I didn't know that I was the root of some of those problems. And I, so you're talking about the conversation we yes. just had. Yes. And now, now that you said that, l- let me show you something I said earlier to my brother about a whole different subject. But it was our, it, it was in me to speak on him mm-hmm. about that situation. And it, I, same thing. It, it's just something that it was. It was showed to me by the by the Lord Himself. Even about myself, but I say that, and well, so I'm saying what I'm saying is this: just because, okay, I said just because you're not privy to what's going on behind closed doors, doesn't mean it's not happening. Mm-hmm. So, the foresight for us to pull the kids out of school. Granted, yes, we had that talk to want to homeschool. Yes, but before 2020 kicked, that December, and I was already sick as a dog. I'm like, man, 2019, I'm like, all right, let's just go ahead and pull these kids out. Mm-hmm. The time is now. 
we said going into winter break, we let the school know, hey, they're going to be homeschooled, right? Mm-hmm. Then 2020 happened, right? No, it was it was actually a little bit after 2020. We pulled them out December of 2020. Was it 2019? Mm-mm. Okay, so December of 2020. We pull them out. And then the agenda of, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to allow boys yeah. and girls to choose what bathroom they want to go in. We're going to start teaching the kids. such, And we, we weren't given this agenda before we pulled them out. Correct. So just the foresight to say, okay, this is probably the time to do it. Let's just go ahead and do it. To then finally pull them out. We weren't privy of what the school systems, what the government, and when their agenda was going to come out. And let me—I mean, you're given a syllabus, but you're not told the world's plans. I mean, the the Antichrist's not going to let you know. Hey, at this point in time, I'm going to get ready to do this. Let me just throw out this disclaimer here: We're not saying this because we hate people who live in sin. That's not for us to judge. No, That's no. not for us to hate these people. What we see is all the evil that can happen by allowing these things. So you're telling me there's a female teacher, because I have nothing but sons. Female, male. I'm already uncomfortable with grown male teachers using the same bathroom as my sons because you just don't know. But a female teacher who wants to identify. as the opposite. As the opposite, wants to go into the bathroom with my son. But her mind is not where it needs to be and decides to hurt my son. But you've allowed it because you said, oh, she's allowed in that bathroom. And vice versa, this man who's a big burly man wants to say, oh, I'm a woman and go into my bathroom and assaults me. But you said this man has access to my bathroom. Without giving too much information, if anyone who knows me and anyone who was at this conversation when I had this conversation... They're going to know who I'm talking about and where this conversation took place. <laughs> but there was a conversation between me and someone who now has transitioned. Don't mm-hmm. say don't say this person's name. I'm, I just don't want to go that route. But this person has transitioned. And so I probably shouldn't have this conversation in the setting in which I had this conversation, but it needed to be said. Mm-hmm. So this person was going through the transition and they told me, why do I harbor our kids? I'm like, I don't harbor them. I protect them from what their eyes and what they can see. Mm -hmm. Yes. When they get older and as they get older, they're going to become privy to a lot of things. They're going to have questions about a lot of stuff. But in due process, am I going to allow these kids to grow up as children, Mm -hmm. then adolescents into young people? I'm not going to give these people, these young children, the playbook about what's happening in a 30 year old's life at a five year old's time speed. Right. And just to say, because I know a lot of people have just a bad taste in their mouth about so-called Christians today, because I don't consider my, I'll put it on my social media platforms because I know the audience I'm trying to reach, but I consider myself a follower of Christ before I consider myself a Christian because there's such a bad taste in people's mouth about Christians. And so to say that I took my son's, obviously I'm a stay at home mom. I'm by myself all the time. And up until my son was seven, I would not let him go into the men's bathroom alone. So he was about five at the time, goes in, you know, a stud walks into the girl's bathroom. So he looks at her. He, okay. Looks under the stall. See, she sits down to pee. This is a girl. Well, mom, why is she dressed like a boy? Baby, that's just how some people feel comfortable. Well, is it right or is it wrong? The Bible says it's wrong, and that's how we live. I'm not telling him to hate this person. I'm not telling him to mistreat this person. But that's how I would want that conversation to be taught to my children. Right. So to to go back to what I was saying, so the, the conversation I was having with this person transition, they asked, you know, why do I raise my children the certain way I raise? Why do I do this? Now, this person is of... Nor- Norwegian belief system b- belief group and this person's significant other is a Wiccan so they, they celebrate Yule they celebrate he celebrates uh, Wotan as his god Wednesday as his god his wife is a practice a practicing Wiccan right so we get into this conversation is like so how do you feel about the the LGBTQ community I said I know people in this community I don't have a certain way about that community but if we're talking about righteousness and what's right, I'm not for allowing this 
because I see the agenda in which is going to be pushed, mm -hmm. which we're in right now. And I, I was saying this back in 2019. 2017. Set okay, t no, because maybe he 2018. He had already quit or got fired by then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like 2017. Okay, 2018. 2017. So I was like, the agenda is this you're gonna get your rights. Now, what separates your rights of being a part of this LGBTQ and the pedophile? Mm -hmm. You're saying this is the way you want to live. You, you're, you're saying this is the way you want to live, and and, and by. I mean, so be it. If this is the way you say you want to live, this is the way you want to live. But now what stops a pedophile saying, well, I just like touching little kids. So let me touch them. They got their rights. Why allow can't them to choose now, whether they're interested in me and allow me to do what I do. And this is why people are so mad, because then once you start to tell these children, well, you can do what you want. You can do this. You can do that. And then these children start thinking, OK, you're already programming your child that they have a say so in things. And this is where we're getting. Once you can get the children to think and believe that they have a say-so in things, you start programming these parents to believe, okay, my children should be able to have a say-so in things. Okay, well, now all the pedophiles like little kids. Well, the little kids should be able to say who they want to be with. Right. And that's where now, we're headed. And let me give you a quick backstory on Brian. So Brian tested a lot of religion to try to disprove his father and <laughs> be like, okay, Christianity is in the right way. And then when you put your pride aside, Brian found God was the right way to go, right? So I say that to say where I'm getting at now. So I had to learn the enemy's tactics. Well, I'm not gonna say I had to. I ended up learning it out of only out of self mm -hmm. once and, and things of that nature to see what was on the other side of the spectrum before coming on this side of the spectrum. So I'm saying this. As a believer in, in what I and what I am, you always ask me like, why do you, why are you researching that? Why are you looking at that? Why do you why is your curiosity like this? Why why do you go so far? Yeah, into he it? researches some things that be causing arguments in our marriage. I'm like, what are you even looking at that for? <laughs> so I say that I say to answer, you know, and and just to give people a plan, I believe in wholeheartedly what the scriptures say. I do. But I'm going to understand the other person yeah. to validate what the scriptures say. Right. If this is what you're saying, because some of these people have a demon on them. Some of these people have spirits on them. Some people, some of these people, I'm not just going to say just demons and, and devil. Some of these people are mentally Ill. ill and they need the help. But if these people don't get that help and don't understand their side compared to to the other side, what's on the adjacent side, how can they get that help? If if Christians only say and beat up, see, I'm against what that pastor, Todd, Mike Todd, whatever, I'm against everything that little program he had and what he did. But now, as a Christian, if you say this, look, sir, I understand that you thought you were doing something godly, but you put a woman on the cross for symbolism of the son of God. Mm -hmm. Understand that was the son of God. Blasphemy. That was a male. What you did was blasphemous. You talked about the 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 what the devil became a, a hustler or whatever. So what are you promoting in the lyrics and things that you're saying? Correct. That's what I'm saying. You have to know the tactics and understand the tactics to then for it be able to defeat the tactics. Pornography. A lot of men struggle with pornography. Not saying you have to go research and everything. Understand what God calls your body, calls your temple. And it, and Are you supposed to be defiling and your people, temple? And not only, and it goes, so maybe and it, you should put up some some it goes, blockers. It goes put beyond. Up, put up some parameters on your internet browser yeah. that will prevent you from and doing that. And it goes that. beyond even um, defiling your body. If you listen or listen to some of these interviews with a lot of these serial rapists and serial killers a lot of them say i was addicted to porn and watching all that porn well then i needed something harder i needed something harder and it changed the way that they viewed women it changed it was their respect for their women mind. right and you're right and so a lot the ted bundy's the uh the guy from milwaukee uh he was on netflix Everyone was doing his little dance. It's, it's only soap water. What's the guy's? Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, yeah. Dahmer. It's oh. just some bubbles. Yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> is not funny. <laughs> so just drink it. It's, it's just bubbles. It's soap water. Whatever. But a lot of, uh, like you said, a lot of these <laughs> rapists, a lot of these people who mm -hmm. done these things in time, they credit pornography 
for to why getting the, them to the point. Yeah, I was gonna say for Charles why Manson. Was a lot of these people credit pornography for to getting them and where they pe- ended yeah, up. Yeah, because a lot of people like to just be like, oh, well, it's just for satisfaction. Okay, well, well, what about whenever you're not satisfied by that type of porn anymore? And you need more or something, like you said, a little harder, a yeah. little more gruesome or a little more defiling, a little more X-rated. Then what? I mean, we have fun with the sex. I'm not throwing that out there. <laughs> but in the parameters of what we do, when we do what we do, it is a one day one. I mean, can we throw? Can we go outside in the rain and do something? Okay, something strange for a little bit. Okay, yeah, that could be interesting. But it ain't like we're introducing the dog into the bedroom and doing zoophilia, or or like like the instance in which someone in your family told us. The person who was grooming people at their work oh, and setting up these young these young kids. Son. I mean, we not. I mean, there's a righteous and in a way in which a man should go, man, woman, mm-hmm. that you should go. And it's because and it's, it's something not this that's way that the be, world it's, is, it's, is right peddling. because it's something that's supposed to be sacred. And yes, this is something yes, that yes. I, I I struggled with. So to get off of the extreme, understand that it can start out very minor. And that simply starts out by not understanding the value of it, the meaning of it, I and you, what God intended it for. I give you a good one for some women. I, I get on the men next, but I'll give you a good one for some women. I'm only gonna strip a little bit to pay my intuition. intuition. So now so or uh, yeah, my, my tuition for school. I say intuition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only gonna I'm only gonna strip for 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 a semester or two, get this little bread, pay my books, pay pay my what's the name, you know whatever whatever. And now, and this is what I hear from, uh, uh, not now I hear this, strip, but this is what I've heard about strippers. Because of the job, and because you already know in your mind what I'm doing ain't really ideal. Mm-hmm. They end up drinking before they go on stage. They end up doing a line before they go on stage. They end up getting high. They block their mental state to be able to do what they're mm-hmm. set out to do because they know within their spirit, within their soul, the route in which they're going isn't made for them. But they're going to do it for the time being to satisfy and get to the goal point that they're at. Now, this this individual in this profession, you know, okay, you got entered. Think of the movie Players Club. Hey, look, my little bro needs, uh, you know, he needs a couple of dancers for his little private party. Woo up the bam. Can y'all come through and make this extra cash? I mean, you say you need the cash for school. Here's a good opportunity. But because you didn't even know you walking, that. you thinking you about to go get this this paper. You getting set up, and you don't know the the demonic forces behind these people. I mean, like the scripture said, you can't sit at the table of devils and eat at the table of, of, of the Lord too. You can't do both. So if you're going to go down the path of wickedness, just understand, like I think you told this to Ethan the other day, like sin leads to death. The scriptures say it itself, but sin will always lead to death. Destruction only leads to more destruction. And some people, some people don't get to hit rock bottom before they get to look up and say, God, help me. Some people get led straight into death. Mm -hmm. Not everyone makes it out. Some are innocent. Some aren't. But understand, for those who are cognizant, have the cognitive, the cognitive mind to know right from wrong, you're willingly choosing death. And then you're going to be, oh, God, why is it me? Or, oh, God, why me when the bad situations come upon you? And that's what a lot of people that don't understand the scriptures, they don't understand that it is a choice. Yes. It is a choice. You can choose life and you can choose death. And Jesus says, choose life. Because I, you know, people wonder and question like, well, if your God's so good, why does he allow that? Why does he allow this? Why is this happening? And it's because we have free will. He's not a God that demands us to love him. He asks us to do this. He asks us to love him. He asks us to follow him. And we get to say yes or we get to say no. And when we say no, this brings about death moral death spiritual death just death like i don't know how else to say it. just everything bad we have this hang- hung up in our living room and in the short phrase it says uh as for me and my house we'll serve the lord in joshua right mm-hmm. but if you fast forward it before that verses uh 15 through 22 joshua 24 15 through 22 
He starts off saying, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you, you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Correct. God's going to God's gonna give you the choice. It's, and this life is about choices. Life isn't hard. We can make life harder than what it is. But God does ultimately give us a choice. I eat myself. God, okay, I've been, I've been doing this, this Christmas thing for X amount of time. How do I just backpedal out of it? My father, my his father, our people, this is what we've only known how to do was Christmas. As simple as, simple as this, you telling me the only day you can truly bless your sons with gifts is on this day. I'm not saying God said that to me, but the thought was like within myself, like, okay, is this going to be, and it was myself really, it was me battling with myself. Am I really telling myself this is the only day I am not even my sons. If my brother-in-laws needed help, I can only help them on this day. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I'm, I mean, I'm saving up for your Christmas gift. I mean, if you want to waste the little blessing I got for you right now, then okay. So be Am I going to be that type of person where I can't bless somebody in the rain, snow, right. heat, whatever? You see, for me, when it came to holidays, I took a different approach when it came to Easter and Christmas. Because, like I said, a lot of Christians that celebrate this like to say, oh, well, it's a remembrance of Jesus. It's a remembrance of this. So you're telling me you can only remember and honor Jesus on these days, on Sundays and Wednesdays and whenever there's a holiday. You can't do this every day. For instance, I just asked my husband, hey, babe. You want to start taking communion with me away. every That's morning? Exactly because why yes. should I do that? Because I should always, in my mind, I was like, you know what? I should wake up and remember Jesus first thing in the morning with my husband who is leading our family in this walk. Mm -hmm. We should be doing that. You know, it shouldn't only be on Sunday mornings at the Lord, Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't only be on Easter. The one time a year I go to church because... It's Easter or Christmas. Like what did what did Christ tell them before the breaking of bed, bread and, and the passing of cup? He says, "And off, as often as you do this." So that doesn't mean on one day. Correct. He Christ didn't say, "As as you wake up on Sunday to do communion on the first Sunday of this month <laughs> or the first day of this week." He said, "As often as you do this, do this in remembrance." I mean, so this is when I say. People do things in vain. Mm -hmm. You can take you you can take communion one time a year, mm -hmm. but you ought to understand what you're doing before you do it. Correct. Some people take communion because that's what the church is doing for the day. So yeah, I'm, pastor you know, gets up there. Hey, we haven't had communion in a while. Let's do it. What? <laughs> like, do, do you not remember just cussing out uh, Sister Sue the other week or talking bad about her? backbiting or talking crazy and now you got you you probably didn't go repent and you know say you know sis i'm sorry or you know what we had an argument forgive me for you know the way i might have came at you mm -hmm. you know forgive me whatever but you now now you're going to take a part in the lord's supper and that is important Break bread, it, it's important to understand take that of his part. body but you're you're not you're not willing to put your pride to the side and apologize to, to do what's right and that's, th that's to what important the Lord to has remember because to a lot of people don't see it this way, but partaking in the Lord's Supper is an act of worship. Yes. It's an act of an offering unto the Lord. Yes. And in the scripture, it says, before you come to me and give me anything, yeah. go over there to your brother or sister in Christ that you got a problem with and make it right. 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 So maybe this wasn't the mysteries of iniquity, but it's more so about the vain worships that we do as it's people. It's about a lot of iniquity. Yeah, true, true. I mean, iniquity is a part of the falsehoods. Like I said, you have to understand things. it to be able to stay away from it. You right. have to know what it is to not fall into it. Can't just blindly and do things. All right, you guys, this is the end of part one of this episode. We will have part two posted next week, so stay tuned for that. I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more, and I hope that you guys join us for part two of Mysteries of Iniquity.